the years, marketers have been analyzing the different generations, baby boomers, Gen X, millennials. And recently we have seen there's a red thread among all of them, speed. They all want everything to happen now. My name is Francisco Serrano, and I am the Chief Speed Officer at One to One and the host of the Now Gen podcast. Join me. Each episode, we talk about what's happening with brands, see how brand professionals across different industries cope with this fast changing market, and live up to the expectation of this now generation. Welcome. This episode is brought to you by One to One. The fastest day-to-day -day design and content studio. For more than 17 years, One to One has been their premier partner for many Fortune 500 companies, proving that tight deadlines shouldn't be a hassle. Hello, and welcome again to the Now Gen Podcast. I am excited today because we're going to talk about a very interesting topic in an industry that I am, uh, let's call it that way, uh, an avid consumer. So the confectionery industry and well, chocolate, candy, et cetera. So uh, we're going to talk about it's the innovation trigger for growth and the importance of uh, adaptability to consumers' uh, attraction to, uh, to their needs if it's something that it's going to trigger growth in your company and, and for your brand. So it's going to be an interesting topic, right? Uh, we're not giving away any candy, unfortunately, but but that's that's kind of you go out and you buy and you reward yourself. And for that, I have a, a rock star in the industry. His name is Guillaume Simon. He's the chief growth officer at Ferrara Candy Company a Ferrero affiliated company. He's a business leader with a track record in different areas, marketing sales and uh, business development in the US, Latin America and Europe. So as you can see, not all over the world, but mostly. Guillaume has been a trigger to many development initiatives, among which the launch of the Kinder brand in the US, successful one, and also coordinating all the business departments in Asia, in the Pacific and Middle East, in Africa as head of their strategy at Ferrero. Um, and also when we met uh, in Mexico, he uh, started the launch, the relaunch of, of the Ferrero company brands. And uh, it was just a complete success. So uh, listen, and let's learn from this individual. Hi, Guillaume. Thank you so much for being in the podcast today. Hi, Francisco. Buenos dias. Muy buenos dias. How are you? Very well, my friend. And we were talking offline about, you know, uh, uh, the wonderful uh, mornings before winter. They're crisp. They're they're sunny, and 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 the views from. Uh, uh, he's he's living in Chicago at the moment, and uh, it's just gorgeous. I mean, cold is is coming the cold season, but it's always good to to enjoy the wonderful views from from the Chicago downtown area. Yeah, so, you're right. You're right. It's still uh, Indian summer here, so it's still pretty warm, and colors are beautiful. It's one of one of the most uh, uh, beautiful seasons here in Chicago, in my in my view. Excellent. Uh, well, be, before we, we dive into the matter, why don't you tell us about uh, your background, Guillaume, and uh, uh, what is it that you're doing right now for the uh, Ferrara Candy Company? Hey, yes. Uh, uh, right now, I'm, I'm a chief growth officer for Ferrara Candy Company. So Ferrara Candy Company is a, is a Ferrero Group uh, affiliated company, which means that we belong to the Ferrero ecosystem. Uh, we are uh, focused on uh, the sugar candy, whereas most of Ferrero is fo mostly fo fo focused on chocolates and now and now biscuits. We they also uh, the the Tic Tac brand belongs to Ferrero also, so there is a little bit of sugar, but we are we are very focused on uh, this. We are a division that uh, has been acquired by uh, Ferrero some years ago, around five years ago, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and uh, and the idea of uh, of uh, this acquisition is of course uh, to get um, competitive position in the world. Actually, we we have a little more ambition that I'm mentioning right now. 
Uh, I cannot tell you everything, all our plans, but uh, we want to make this business uh, growing business, fastly growing business. Uh, if we look at my uh, my background, I worked in two companies in my career, only two companies. One, The first one was Danone, and I worked 10 years from Danone in different parts of the world, uh, more, more, more precisely in, uh, in Latin America. I worked in Venezuela, in Panama, then in Mexico. And then I had a, a four or five years period in, uh, in, in France. After that, I switched to Ferrero, which was probably the most, uh, the smarter decision in my, uh, in my career. Uh, and I started in, uh, in France, in Ferrero, in different uh, marketing and sales function. Uh, then I came back to Latin America, uh, in uh, more precisely in Brazil, where I was CMO for South America. Uh, managing uh, our brand portfolio, the Ferrero brand portfolio in that uh, in that area. Then I moved to Mexico, as you indicated it uh, in uh, in the introduction, uh, as also uh, a CMO. So again, uh, in uh, in marketing function. And then uh, I uh, I kept on climbing the American continent, and uh, I arrived in the, in the U.S., where my mission was to launch the Kinder brand, which I did in uh, 2017 more or less uh, uh, and uh, I did I, I spent a lot of time in in the US in, in New York and then in Los Angeles uh, focusing on on uh, on kinder after that I spent one year more or less in Luxembourg which is our uh, where our international global headquarters is uh, as uh, as you mentioned head of strategy for the other part of the world so Asia Pacific Africa Middle East uh, and then I came back to the U.S. this time for to develop our, our business at, at Ferrara Candy Company. So this is oh. my my career. A lot of different geographies, uh, as you as you as you know, a uh, lot of different type of missions too. Uh, and I say, I must say I'm I'm pretty proud of what, I, what we have we have we have achieved with Ferrero with the teams that I've been working with in the in the in the last years. Uh, probably the, the 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 most notable uh, thing in the U.S. is the launch of Kinder, which uh, is, uh, as you mentioned, it uh, fortunately uh, a big success. Uh, so we have we have built here uh, the the how to say uh, the foundation of uh, of uh, something that uh, has brought uh, brought uh, a new way of eating chocolate in the U.S. I think. Yeah, I can tell you that. I mean, it's just uh, there's always like this, you know, the 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 Kinder Surprise Egg, that, which is like very very successful uh, all over the world, and in the U.S. it had a couple of of, of, of hurdles, right, uh, for whatever reason. And now uh, I see it, uh, uh, the Kinder brand uh, everywhere, and it's just that that flavor that is unique to that brand you don't find it anywhere else in the because you have all the all the different massive brands of chocolate in the u.s but there's nothing like the kinder brand and, and I, I i tell it as a consumer because i'm i was brought up in mexico and 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 kinder became uh part of the ecosystem of candy uh, after a while, right? And so, and in the US now it's it's everywhere. So congrats on that. But when, when you say that you're in charge of the growth, you know, of the business development at Ferrara, what, what exactly that is? I mean, you uh, are you, you're involved in the sales arena or, or in the brand nurturing or in the pushing of the business distribution? How does that, uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, but uh, my uh, my focus is on uh, mid-term, long-term growth. Okay. So uh, we 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 want to build this business. This business has been very focused on short-term growth and actually giving excellent results because uh, four months ago uh, we became the leader of the candy market, uh, the sugar candy market in the U.S. Wow. So, so uh, uh, very good, very good result due to the focus, due to uh, the innovation, due to a number of factors that uh, have been very successful in the past and are giving results right now. Now, the way we see the future is a little bit different because uh, we, we we know that the drivers that we we will have to uh, activate uh, to accelerate our growth uh, will have to be uh, a little different. We'll we'll have to um consider also 
uh, our will to become uh, a worldwide company, not only a US centric company. So uh, I'm preparing the path for uh, an acceleration uh, of uh, our growth. Oh. Uh, and um, so my job is this one. So it's uh, it goes through uh, planning. Planning is a part of, of it. So not only short-term planning, but also mid-term, long-term planning, because we know that uh, to achieve uh, uh, our ambition, uh, we need to be able to plan it uh, and we are very dedicated to that. Then uh, it's about strategy. What is a strategic path to reach our our, our ambition? Uh, so we need we, here we need to, to 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 prepare that. There are different drivers that uh, we have identified. Uh, we have uh, also uh, sized uh, our potential, right? Uh, and, and then we need to, of course, uh, part of it is is to work on how to get there. And there are different uh, implications. Uh, strategy is one, uh, but uh, you can you can imagine uh, it has an impact on different functions: sales, marketing, uh, HR, uh, because we need also to have the capabilities uh, to to build the capabilities to to deliver this growth. So uh, there is a you act in a lot of different areas, but uh, the, I would say the common point is that uh, you prepare, you are focused on mid-term, long-term growth. And not only short-term growth. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And and um, and a question for for you is uh, uh, when when you when you're talking about growth, you're talking about brand distribution and, and making sure that the products get to the consumer, right? And uh, in order to do that, do you think that uh, you know different flavors, textures, uh, you know? like innovation helps you uh to achieve that top of mind and that you know that penetration of the market uh and and how do you how do you how do you structure that i mean imagine that you have a portfolio and you want to grow do you to sell the same the same more geographically or or do you like inject innovation because it's key to the growth of, of the category or jumping into different categories. Well, at, at, at Ferrara, at Ferrero, uh, but at Ferrara in particular, we 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 start with the consumer. So uh, the way we we see innovation is uh, that for us there are two types of innovation. Uh, one type that we call proximity, uh, which is about. Uh, maximizing the potential of the brand through flavor extension, packaging extension, uh, panel extension, etc. So the innovation here is uh, taking uh, the equity of the brand and stretching it as much as uh, is possible, as much is relevant for the consumer uh, in different areas where it makes sense. This is proximity. Then we see another type of innovation that we call transformational, uh, that um, which objective uh, is to bring a change in the way the category is consumed from the consumer. So can be uh, within the categories, can be bringing consumption, uh, consumption from without, uh, well, from outside of the of the of the category. But uh, the objective is really to change the habits. And those are, are the innovation that uh, has the most impact on the on the category, uh, because proximity innovation can uh, drive uh, proliferation of SKUs. So too many products, too many uh, flavors, etc. And uh, this is not usually not good for uh, the efficiency of the category. Efficiency, if we measure the efficiency. Uh, in terms of dollar per uh, pound, for example, or in terms of velocity, right? Uh, on the contrary, uh, a transformational innovation, changing the habit of the consumer, will be, bring incrementality to the to the to the category, uh, and will change also the perimeter of the category. Uh, so this this, of course, is uh, where we mostly pay attention. Because uh, if we want to build the future of this category, and uh, as a, as a leader of the market, uh, we work for us, but we work for the category also. 
And if we want to build a future of the category, this kind of innovation is what will allow us to, to do that. Oh, great. And, and do you do you have any 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 kind of innovation that you see in this category uh, in any country or any other company or whatever? So we, we can understand better an example of a trans transformational like I mean, I can bring it to you like the Apple, you know, the the, the, the Apple uh, iPhone, that, but that's another industry. You as an expert in the in the confectionery, do you see a, a best practice that you can tell us? Uh, we have we have one at Ferrara, which is called oh. uh, under the brand Nerd. Yes, Nerds. of course, uh, Nerds. Yeah. So the product is called Nerds Gummy Cluster. Nerds. Uh, Nerds Gummy Cluster. So the, the characteristic of this product is that uh, it's a mix of different uh, technologies. So the reality of the product, it's a gummy uh, with a round. Um, uh, Covered by uh, uh, little pieces of nerds. Whoa! Right? So this is why we call it cluster. Uh, so it's a mix of uh, again, it's a mix of different technology that we have inside Ferrara, and this product is a, is a huge success. It's right now a 120 million brand. Uh, it has been launched uh, two years ago, more or less. Uh, so it's uh, one of the biggest success uh, in the market since the launch of uh, Skittles, more or less. Um, so this is a good example because uh, it's a real experience in candy. And so candy is a very quick, uh, usually quick satisfaction of a craving, right? Uh, in, in that case, it delivers a real experience in candy, which is it's not a, a very short, uh, a very short moment in your mouth. It's a, a real multi uh, texture, a multi um, uh, how can I describe that? Uh, multisensorial uh, kind of experience. So it is, it's, an, it's a candy you keep in your mouth longer and provides you with uh, a mix of different sensation that no other candy can deliver. Uh, so this is a type of, uh, of uh, innovation that changes the way people consume candy because it brings this notion of experience. Okay. Oh. Impressive. I have never seen that. I, of course, I know nerds, but I've never seen the clusters. So, uh, well, I'll try it. Yes, this this product will, will change the 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 way you consider this this category. I can promise you. Yeah, for sure. And and I mean, there's many people listening right now, or will be listening right now at this podcast, and and they are like, okay, so innovation to trigger growth. Uh, is that going to take me long? Is because you know nowadays, uh, Guillaume, we have this uh, red thread, and the reason of this podcast, the red thread of uh, of of the consumers wanting things to happen now, so instant gratification, and and across the board, it's like you know, I want it to happen now, right? So, how long does it take to to innovate a product like this? Is it like a five years in the making like a car or 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 is more like test and learn and then you launch a lot and then so what's the you know what's the what's the path that a brand should look in in as, as far as time goes and and especially in this industry which is a confectionery one right well, there, there is a difference between uh, launching uh, or uh, developing an innovation that is uh, proximity innovation. Uh, so uh, let, let's say a line extension uh, that can be can be pretty quick because you use the same technology and uh, you add a new flavor or you add a new pack size. Or uh, so this this is a pretty usually pretty fast uh, uh, development type. I would say one year, something like that. Okay. Uh, one or two years, depending on how sophisticated the, the 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 innovation is. Then transformational innovation can take five years, ten years. At Ferrero, some innovation you you know that uh, are in the market right now uh, have been developed over uh, twenty years, right? Uh, when you have a real uh, technological barrier, or you want to to build a real technological barrier, when it requires a change in uh, the way you manufacture the product. 
uh, when it required a, a big investment uh, in, uh, in new technology, when it requires a long research path. And at Ferrero, we usually take time before we launch a product to be able to, uh, when we go and see our customers, uh, to come with uh, a business case that is uh, very robust. So very robust meaning uh, that we have validated all the marketing mix with the consumer uh, in the with the appropriate methodologies during an appropriate period of time. And this takes time. Okay. So uh, the way we, we work at Ferrero most of the time is with patience because uh, we know that uh, uh, time has a value when you develop innovation, in particular when uh, it's about fine tuning uh, and making sure that uh, your innovation meets the needs of the consumer or create a new need in the in the in the in the market. So again, it can take uh, three years, five years, ten years, twenty years. Uh, it, it depends a lot on on the kind of innovation. And and do you do you feel that uh, that the market situation triggers that in in your favor or against your uh, your uh, because you know I tell my wife all the time that when whenever I'm depressed I go and eat candy and chocolate and whenever I want to celebrate I go and eat candy <laughs> you know it's like uh, mm -hmm. it's my like my indulgence right uh, does that influence the you know the 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 consumption and and the need for innovate in in the confectionery industry it, it does it does but uh i we noticed that uh, in the us in particular uh this this uh the the, the usual uh, habit of many manufacturers is proliferation so every year you have a new innovation every year you have uh, etc and I don't know a lot of brands that can afford this uh, this space of innovation. Apple can, right? Because each time, each year, uh, there you have something new. Each year you have a, so it's a very fast cycle uh, in in food. It's more difficult to 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 do that because uh, uh, bringing real breakthrough every year is almost impossible. Mm. So um, so I think the pace of innovation is what probably. Uh, differentiate uh, the way Ferrero operates than uh, versus uh, most of its competitors, particularly in the in the in, in the US. Kinder is an example. It took uh, ten years uh, to 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 prepare to decide that we were ready to launch to launch Kinder. But when we did, we did it with a business case that was rock solid uh, because uh, we validated every aspect of this business case to make it uh, to make it uh, successful wow yeah and and uh and do you feel that uh the having i i agree with you that in the us there's a lot of innovation and there's a lot of new skus in and and probably it's because just you want to win space in the in the retail area right so if you have more products you get more space in the in the shelf, and that helps you, right? Or isn't that like a strategy from companies to say, "Oh, I have four more brands of whatever now, a combination of flavors that is, oh, okay, let let me give you more space, and then that will give you more share of the market." Does that work like that? Yes, but uh, there is a limit to that. Uh, the limit is uh, because you you need to. You need to to look at uh, the shell the shelf space uh, in in the of course in the different stores. You need to look also at the dollar per uh, SKU or the dollar per uh, square meter or the dollar per uh, pound uh, you are selling, because this in the end what makes a difference, right? So having more and more and more and more facing, but diluting uh, your value because you're doing that is not a good idea. Also, because the more uh, products you have in the, in the store, the more labor intensive it becomes. And so you, oh. you can find yourself you can find yourself with a very large range of products 
uh, and a lot of out of stock on your core business and what remains when uh, you don't have uh, the right, uh, uh, I would say, presence in the store to ensure maximum visibility is the uh, SKUs that are uh, rotating the less, right? So uh, the value you create in the store uh, is uh, becomes lower and lower because mm -hmm. of this. So innovation is, of course, a driver of growth. Everybody knows that. But I think uh, the, 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 there, there is, um, again, there is a limit to proliferation. There is a limit to number of innovation you can do unless you have a strategy of in and out. And you, manage, you need to manage your range also uh, in the way you innovate. Yeah. And, and tell me, does the uh, e-com world, you know, it's more, it's, I mean, it's, it's less of a, of a, you know, a storefront type of thing and more, uh, oh, I'm going to buy my favorite candy and, and I'm going to deliver it home. And then you go out of that war that it's happening in, in the retail. Was that, do you think that after the pandemic and now the new reality e-com has shifted the the behavior of consumer of consumer uh as they approach uh, a seasonality like halloween that is coming or christmas or whatever they like ah oh, i don't want to go to the store just buy and i have my top of mind which are blah 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 and then i order them and i get that do, do you see that happening and and growing or do you feel that retail is not going away and it's going to be there for the keeps I mean, as a general idea, not, not going into the details. Yeah, well, e-commerce is growing for sure. Uh, it's, it's, it's still pretty small because uh, for e-commerce for impulse uh, needs to be managed uh, differently and because uh, impulse uh, works with visibility in the store. Uh, so you need to create the same visibility in uh, e-commerce because uh, otherwise you, you almost never have candies sugar candy on your uh, shopping list. Never, right? yes. So uh, what triggers the purchase is uh, you go you go to the checkout and you see at the checkout uh, uh, the presence of candy or you go through uh, the, the snacks uh, area and you see some candies uh, and, and, you, and, and you buy them. So uh, it's, again, it's an impulse purchase Impulse is more difficult in e-commerce, but impulse is not impossible in e-commerce. Uh, it's a, so you have to build a real. Uh, you cannot if you are just present in e-commerce, it's not enough, right? You need to create visibility in e-commerce, and there, there is a specific uh, strategy for that uh, that uh, we we are we are working on. Uh, so, do I think that e-commerce will replace the retail? No. I think retail will remain, uh, of course, uh, for for a number of reasons. I, I, do I think that e-commerce will grow? Yes. Do I think that uh, impulse needs an additional effort uh, in e-commerce? Also, yes. We, as as consumers, see the companies offering all the sorts of different uh, options coming in the shelves and in and, e-commerce and, e and trying to say this is the right chocolate and or the candy or the you know the soft drink um what what is next I, I mean you are like a visionary and and you see you have seen a lot of products from a lot of companies all over the world do you see, and, and you were talking about trans, transformational, do, do you see a shift, uh, an important shift uh, in the next 10 years for this industry? And do, do you feel that, or it's just going to be slow, uh, you know, it's not going to be transformational like like in the, uh, uh, in the communications uh, industry or in any other uh, category? How do you see the confectionery industry behaving in the next 10 years? So it's difficult to answer the, this question. Confectionery uh, regroups a, a number of, 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 of categories. Do I see transformation? Yes. Uh, I think some manufacturers like us will drive the transformation. Do I see it as a fast transformation? I don't think so. I think it will take some time. Uh, also because the, the consumption is there. 
if you look at the candy uh, sugar candy category, this category has growing has been growing double digit for the last two years. So basically, the, the, this category is now thirty percent bigger than it was before COVID. Wow! Wow! So, 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 so there is a, there is a, so there might not be transformation of the category yet, but there is a transformation in the habits of the consumer. And it comes from uh, some new habits that have started during the pandemic uh, regarding the sugar uh, candy category. So um, some of this shift and the habits will remain, some won't remain because it's uh, it will, some of them are uh, very specific to the pandemic period when people mm -hmm. were, were were stuck at home. So uh, you have some new habits like uh, eating a candy to fight against boredom or uh, because I feel uh, uh, depressed uh, and it will, uh, it will uh, cheer me up. Uh, so what uh, some consumer call uh, kind of... Uh, uh, mental health, right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 sugar candy is considered as a, um, a part of the, the the portfolio of products you you uh, appeal to when you're in this situation. Um, and and so part of this those habits will shift. Part will remain because it became a real habit, right? Uh, actually, the when we ask the consumer. Are you planning to uh, consume less of sugar candy products uh, in the future? Uh, Ninety percent say no. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Uh, so, so it means that uh, this, uh, I would say, growth coming from uh, new habits uh, from the consumer is probably going to remain. Uh, then up to us manufacturers to bring more transformational initiative to make sure that uh, we can build on this growth uh, for the future of the category. Yeah, it's impressive. That is not just, oh, let's launch this new product, right? It's just to transform the industry. It really, it really takes a lot of effort, especially from companies that believe in, in that transformation, not only uh, to be there and to sell the same, same old, same old, right? To really uh, transform it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Well, I, I would like to talk about this like a long time, but we're coming too close to our interview. And uh, I wanted to ask you uh, if there's one thing that our uh, listeners and viewers can take away from, from today, what would you say? What would be the one thing that you would, that you would tell uh, the audience to to take with them and and start implementing. Well, start implementing. I don't know, but uh, I, I I believe uh, in. Uh, I, I I think what makes a difference uh, in uh, FMCG markets is, is the capacity to move the lines. Uh, so to bring to the market uh, projects, ideas, innovation that really can transform the way the consumer behaves. And, uh, and I, be, I, I believe that because I, I, I've uh, experimented this. I experimented Kinder in the US, I experimented Nutella in Mexico, I experimented different business situations that... Uh, uh, clearly indicate that uh, the real winners uh, in, uh, in particularly food categories is the one that is bringing, has this capability to transform the way the category is, uh, is, uh, is uh, the, the way the consumer is, uh, is uh, consuming the, the category. And this can take a lot of time. I think uh, the, what we, we learned at Ferrero from the founder of the, of the company, Mr. Michele Ferrero, is patience. Uh, it takes time to be able to deliver this kind of transformation. Uh, and it takes a lot of uh, consumer understanding. So it can be frustrating sometimes because uh, we are in an environment that everything, as you mentioned often, uh, Francisco, everything is very fast. 
uh, and has to go fast. Sometimes it's it's necessary to uh, take time to do things slow with uh, with 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 more time uh, because what you will get in the end is uh, the capacity to really uh, again move the lights to really. Uh, bring breakthrough and bring breakthrough is not through speed. Uh, so there is, uh, I would say, uh, a part of the business that uh, is, is needs this uh, speed of execution, this permanent speed of execution, you need to be faster than your competitors. Yes. Uh, and there is another part of the business uh, that is about preparing the future, uh, that is about uh, uh, driving transformation for the category uh, that takes more time. And you, I think, need to manage uh, the patient it requires to be transformational with the speed it requires to win every day. And this balance, which is not hard to achieve, is what, for me, makes the difference in the end. OK, well, it is it is uh, something that uh, that that makes a lot of sense because you cannot, I mean, you cannot approach a, a breakthrough problem or challenge if you are focused on the day-to-day -day only. You need to have your eyes on the road ahead more than just, you know, uh, uh, short term, but really transform, like you said, 10 years. 10 years to the oil in the U.S. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Guillaume. I wanted to ask you, this is a fun part of the interview. Um, what is your, as a personal, you know, what is your personal streaming brand, you know, uh, and why? Do you have, do you like watch any, you know, there's a boom in all this streaming, video streaming categories and uh, which one is the one that Guillaume watches? And why? Uh, to to, uh, to be honest with you, I read more than I uh, watch uh, streaming vi videos. Okay, for sure. Now I I, I use Netflix uh, when when I because I like documentaries. So this is uh, this is uh, where I uh, Netflix or Hulu. Uh, if you were talking about those kind of platforms, uh, yes. Is where I, I try to 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 pick my favorite documentaries. Wow! So documentaries is kind of your bread and butter that you want to watch. Yes. So okay, great. And and Netflix is the is your go to. Depends. Netflix or Hulu, etc. I'm more uh, more driven by uh, the kind of documentaries I can I can find than than the platform in itself. Okay, great. Great, thank you very much uh, for that insight. Uh, we always tend to, you know, what's the point of view and what's the consumption uh, uh, in in a different segment that the, the professional is doing their work. So, and and why you do it. So that speaks a lot about, you know, gives a perspective of what's happening and in, in the mind of of the of the person that that is talking. So, thank you for sharing that. Uh, well, Guillaume, uh, where can people reach you if they would like to, you know, maybe uh, ask a question or whatever? Is it a question? Yeah. Can, can, where can people reach out to you uh, to to if they wanted to ask a question, whatever? Is it is it LinkedIn or where where is a is a yes. good place? Yes, LinkedIn is a is a is a, is a good place to do that. Okay, That's perfect. Right. So Guillaume Simone. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we've been talking to uh, Guillaume Simone. He's the chief growth officer at uh, Candy Ferrara Company, a Ferrara affiliated company. And uh, I thank you for being here, uh, Guillaume. And uh, all the listeners out there, if you want to be on top of what's going on on the uh, brand world and how the professionals like Guillaume are challenging, are taking on the challenges out there from the now generation in the fast paced market, doing whatever they want to do every time different. Well, please tune in the next episode of the Now Gen podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Francisco.
See you soon. Thank you.